you have to have both in place, strong leadership and strong people in the population. Strong leadership and strong people in the population. Well, what do I mean by that? Like I said, most oftentimes, for us, we have this Jesus syndrome where we want one person to do all the work. When it go right, we give them accolades. When it go wrong, we crucify them. And we have to get out of that mentality. Our communities are a society. All of these musajids were formed for a specific purpose. The masjid in DeSoto is formed for a specific purpose. This masjid formed for a specific purpose. The masjid in Oakland formed for a specific purpose. So these communities are small societies in the greater society we live in. And to address our youth and how we incubate our youth and the role leadership and community play in that is vital. We will go to the Quran, chapter 2 and 260. And many of us know this verse. It's the verse where Abraham, alayhi salam, is asking the law subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how to give life, how to resurrect, how to, how to give life to the dead. Allah responds, to Abraham, do you, I mean, and I'm paraphrasing, do you not have faith in me? You don't, you don't trust me? And Abraham says, yes, I do, but I wanted to satisfy, he wanted to satisfy his own, uh, his own understanding, his own uh, 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 kalb, kalbi, his own heart, his own sense of understanding. Allah tells Abraham to take four birds, tame them, train them, incline them, fasur huna, fasur, fasur huna, to turn to thee. Place one bird on each hill, jabalin, which also means, it's, it's, this word can mean mountain as well. And we know that the mountain is symbolic of a strong stabilizing force on this earth. Imam Waratudi Muhammad Rahim Allah Alayhi told us that there are four major influences that dominate man's life. Four, education, government, business, and culture. Now we focusing on what it takes for those in leadership in leadership position to raise good offspring coming from our communities. If we look at Abraham alayhi salam as a spirit, then we have that spirit in us. If we look at, take the man out of the equation, look at Abraham as a spirit, and we realize we have that spirit in us. The desire to tame, the desire to train, and the desire to teach is in all of us. It's innate. It's one of those innate qualities that's in us. Imam Muhammad has said that the four birds represent what it takes for us to, to resurrect our local as well as our overall societies. We must teach our children, train them, tame them from the earliest stages in life, like Abraham, alayhi salam, did with the birds. 
We must train them to sit in positions of power. That's what the mountain represents. We can't teach our youth to go to school, get degrees, and the degrees are meaning, meaningless to our society. We can't continue to tell them to go to school, get degrees, and they have no meaning to our society. So what I'm saying is, we have a community in Houston, and we have children that are going off to college, and they're choosing degrees that can't come back to help us in Houston. Tame the bird, train the bird to think. We must now teach our children to go to school, to become hedge fund managers. Hedge fund managers, judges, and we have a few, lawyers, commercial builders, journalists. Isn't that what our brothers and sisters of the Jewish faith do? Isn't that how they have controlled and still control the world to this day? You don't see a, a, most Jewish students going to school but for a couple of things. Law, political science, mountain, 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 mountain. And they stabilize and control the world. And we teach our children to go to do the same uh, reciprocal things that everybody's already doing in the community. My son said to me, and Daddy, I want to live in a house on our block when I get older. And my response to him was, I've done that. I want you to build the block that we own. I mean, I, I, isn't a child supposed to outdo the parent? What should I tell him? Okay, this is fine. I'll sell you this one. And our youth have to be incubated which simply means they need to be protected. The mother bird incubates her offspring. We know that, right? She sits on the eggs until they're ready to meet the world. This is the mother. She sits on the eggs until they are ready to meet the world. Until it's time for them to hatch. Our societies, our individual massages, must address the four influences that Imam Wadafuddin Muhammad spoke about in order to incubate our youth. If you travel around and you realize that many of the influences are covered, but one that's affecting our community is the culture. This culture is sweeping them up. And we have to figure a way to combat this influence. Allah says we are the best community evolved. Still evolving. Many of the pioneers that understood the nation of Islam. Many of the pioneers who understood the Nation of Islam and Imam Waratuddin Muhammad's ascension. You can see how the Honorable, uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad incubated Imam Waratuddin Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a genius. 
He tamed that bird in religion. He tamed that bird in religion. But this is the genius of it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad tamed and trained him, Imam W. Dean Muhammad, in everything that was contrary to what he was teaching. Young Wallace wanted to burst out, you know, like a, like a baby bird. He wanted to bust, burst out of the shell. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad kept him sitting on him. He was saying to young Wallace, they ain't, they're not ready yet. But when he came in 76, 75, 76, 75, he did as Cassius Clay did. He shook up the world. This is how we have our kids in our communities. We have to tame them, train them, develop them until we can unveil them. And when we do that, those birds won't have any problems coming back to our community to help us build our societies, our communities. It is said in Sahih al-Bukhari that Muhammad the Prophet, it is, it is, it is uh, said that Muhammad the Prophet said, everyone is responsible for those things that fall under his or her responsibility, his or her authority. And for our youth and our communities, all of our youth in our communities fall under our authority. So let's look at these, this, 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 uh, this having this ability to tame, to train, to, de to develop our youth. And inshallah, my time is up. Uh, but I, I want to say, uh, again, thank you, Houston. Thank you uh, uh, for allowing me, Jazakallah Khair, for being here and your presence. Peace. Thank you for listening. As-salamu alaykum. Yes, absolutely. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Imam Ali, from the, the so Islamic so so uh, the Soto Association of, of the Soto for that enlightening presentation. I think that you will find in this Ramadan conference, um, as we continue on, there's going to be many. Uh, that's going to be much for us to benefit from when we go back to our respective communities <clears throat> to share about this focus on leadership. And that's one of the things that I love about <clears throat> the leadership of Imam W.D. Muhammad. A, a true leader develops the people around him to lead because a true leader understands that they're not going to always be here. So if you really love that which you're leading, you want to develop those around you to carry it on when you're not here anymore. So that's one of the things I know we initially as a parent, this is one of the things you instill in your children, you know, and then that extension of that same leadership branches out into whatever area, field of work or interest that you're involved in. So I think that throughout this weekend, everyone that is presenting on this panel or upon this podium today is going to give us even maybe some things that we've heard. We've heard them over and over again. But sometimes the application of how someone does it in a different way or a different environment, it may make an impact on us and say, I've heard that before, but I never heard it implemented in that way. So we thank Allah for this tradition of the Ramadan session for us to share these insights from the Quran and our leader, Imam Wadzuddin Muhammad. So next we have our another great